Kingdom Hearts! Instantly, you get a vision of smacking balls at Waka's head. Oof. Oof, this game is this game is graphic. This game's brutality is offset by the fact that it's full of cute little Disney characters. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Kingdom Hearts 3, what I really want to know, what I've been waiting 12-ish years for, do they have the Winnie the Pooh minigames? And the answer is yes, and they suck just as much. Ha! <laughs> Wouldn't be a Kingdom Hearts game without shitty minigames. <laughs> All right, now that the big question's out of the way, what else has this game got? Um, where does this fit in the timeline? Okay, so they took every single game that got made in between the main games, and they're like, all of this is canon. You know, did Shigeru Miyamoto's like Mario? Yeah, Mario Run, that's canon. Uh, Super Mario Strikers, that's can that's gotta fit in the canon somewhere. Like every single Mario game, can you imagine if they threw that into a big complicated fucking plot line that they have? to keep track of. No, they wouldn't do that. They're not fucking stupid. So, remember that Kingdom Hearts game that came out on mobile like 20 years ago that nobody ever played? That is the absolute driving force behind this one, but only in the background. They're setting it up for Kingdom Hearts 4, so if you didn't play that or you didn't look at the little expository thing at the beginning, you're like, what is going on? And isn't that really the point of Kingdom Hearts? Asking yourself, what? What's going on? I heard heart and darkness 20 times and I started spacing out. Seriously, Kingdom Hearts is the drinking game of drink whenever you hear heart, darkness, light, or friend. You'll be blasted so fast you'll be doing stuff like this. I think maybe as a kid, I would have let the dialogue and writing slide a little bit more than I am now. But I'm an adult, man. I waited 12 years for this game. I cannot let this stuff slide. The writing is beyond terrible at this point. You've been waiting so long, you're like, they've got to have hammered this stuff out by now, right? They've had so long to work on it. Like, I don't know, taking a shower? Nah! You could take a shower every day for five of those 12 years and be like, I'm gonna think of better stuff to say for the dialogue. Didn't happen. They were like, um, did we write any of the lines yet? They're like, no, uh, game ships tomorrow. Oh, fuck. It got a fucking, uh, uh, uh. Okay, just for an example, so you don't think I'm just an angry dick at this point, let's take some of these scenes out of context and you can judge the writing quality for yourself. It reminds me of a promise I made. To who? Just someone I once met. Can't tell. Sounds like a good memory. Okay, take a moment to analyze. And you're right! I agree with your opinion. What is this schlock? They had so long to perfect it, and they didn't. I am a toy. And a friend. Because you know nothing about hearts and love. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Namura, Oka. You call that a- Dialogue. Well, I had to go to the bathroom. At the very least, now we get to see Sora become a fully-fledged doctor and recite the Hippocratic Oath. I do no hurt. The dialogue feels really forced, like everybody's just tired. They're like, oh man, do I really have to say darkness this many times? If I ever have to say the word friend again, I'm going to stab somebody in the nose. If you're a fan of cutscenes, this game has got you covered. It is like 72.3 repeating percentage of cutscenes. Like seriously, every 10 seconds. I think there's a couple parts when it gives you control for like a couple seconds before it cutscenes you immediately afterwards. It's like they wanted to make a movie, but then they're like, uh-oh, it's supposed to be a game? Ah, oh, crap. And then they typed up some stuff in like 10 minutes using the Kingdom Hearts initial game engine machine. And then they're like, here you go! Game shipped yesterday. Ah, crap. Uh, put it in as DLC. Let's talk about the characters. Axel is Baxel, baby! But now he's Lee again, which is definitely not a cooler name. <laughs> Come on, man, I like this cool, like, darkness name. That's like Sonic running out and being like, Hey, my actual name is Ogilvy. Got it memorized? And it's like, wait, what the actual fu- That's canon? That's canonized in the comics. His actual factual name is Ogilvy. What the fuck? Kyrie's got a new look, and she's got a Keyblade in this one, so you think she's going to be absolutely helpful, right? Well, she is a woman in a video game, and people that don't know how to write characters or stories or anything, so... Oh, I'm not sure about that. It's hard to find strong female characters in games that you don't make the character yourself in, but... 
Let's see if they prove us right or wrong or m middle option. Riku's in this one, but he lost his badass look because he got a haircut from a demon tower. Riku lost his badass grown up look from the second game in favor of this guy. I didn't even know who the f he was. He went into this demon tower and got a haircut, spat back out, broke his keyblade. I didn't even know these things could break. I thought the whole point of Keyblades was that it's like a manifestation of like your spirit energy or something and then you put keychains on it and it changes its form based on the memories in your heart. Uh, Donald and Goofy are there and they exist and they're more annoying than ever. Uh, Jerkules is back. Oh, you know what? They got James Woods as Hades again, which is fantastic work because he's the only one that works as Hades and he's the best character in the game so far, or at all. But he's only in here for like five minutes and then pff, it's over. You're on doing other stuff. You don't even get to fight him. He's another Disney villain that it's like, well, he got shafted in favor of Tornado Man. I get it. We've fought him before and all the other ones, but I just wanted to feel the heat. If you're a fan of the series, you should like this game pretty well. I mean, I did. I didn't play it. I watched someone else play it, but I was enjoying it for most of the time, even though there wasn't a lot to it. It's the standard blase fair, go here, beat Heartless on the way, beat boss, the end. The problem with it is the bosses in this one just aren't very interesting. Here's the Rapunzel world boss. It's a Heartless. Okay. Here's the Frozen world boss. It's a Heartless. Okay. Here's all the Everything world bosses. They're all Heartless. I don't get to fight any of the Disney villains anymore. Clayton, badass fight. Hated it. Still fun though. Mufasa. He just flies around like a dickhead, but then you get to fight his big genie form. Fun. The Heartless? Eh. From all the Disney villains, every all of them, but none of them, man. Heartless, 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 Heartless. The plot of some of these worlds feels really strange. Sora and pals are just kind of shoehorned in and along for the ride instead of making a new plot line that's more Kingdom Heartsy. They feel really out of place, like they truly don't belong in these worlds. I know that they're like, oh, they're interlopers, they really don't belong, but we can't let them figure out for the world order or whatever that we always mess with regardless, but eh. The game makers are just pretending like in the movie Rapunzel that Sora was just there the whole time. Like the Pixar editors just cut him out of the movies, but oh no, he was totally there. He was just outside. Uh, he, he was behind that rock, but he was totally there during the whole of Tangled. He was totally there for Frozen too. Sora and pals are their best friends. Boo. Sora's interactions with characters just seems kind of shallow and awkward. They should have called it Kingdom Hearts Third Wheel. Okay, why is Goofy suddenly the smartest character, and not only that, the voice of reason? Is that has that always been a thing? Have I been spacing out? Has he undergone such huge character development that he's evolved beyond everyone else? He's been there in the background that whole time while Sora and Donald are fighting. He's like, those poor fools. They have no idea my power. We should be safe here! Ooh, let's talk about the prettiness, the graphics. Compared to the PS2 era, woof, these look fantastic. We've certainly come a long way. All the worlds look like they were handcrafted and just, oof, polished to perfection. Look at that water. Look at these coral reefs. Dude, the way the coral reefs are going, these are going to be the only way to experience them in like 10 to 15 years. Ha 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 environments. Just look at these beautiful scenes. They're not even pre-rendered. Th these are amazing. Look at Johnny Depp's face. Ah, it looks fantastic. The problem is, most of these worlds feel absolutely soulless. Like there's nobody in them. There's nothing in them. There's no animals in them, just heartless. And in the Toy Story world, it feels like there should be like people walking around. And they probably thought about it at some point, but then they were like, Ah, you know what's easier? If we say that we made a copy of the world on a USB flappy drive, and then you're in the copy of that world, so there's no people, so we don't have to render them. <laughs> you know what would have been a good idea? If you made like the ghosts of people walking around and they ripped your hearts out and so you can't experience that world you can only experience like the darkness heart world or whatever it's kingdom hearts nobody would have gave a shit anyways monsters inc having like no monsters is ridiculous you get the human fire extinguisher that's it plus there's no like themed heartless per level they wanted to just be like oh check it out uh, there's heartless no bodies and unversed in like all these worlds isn't that crazy cool it's like yeah but are they themed around these levels? 
they're like, well, some of them are. There's these dandelion puffs because there's uh, uh, dandelions around. Remember in the old days of video games where they could only render so many things on the screen at any one given time, so to not let the frame rate take a huge shit all over your life, they disappeared money and stuff so they can save some memory? Yeah, well, this is the PS4, all right? You could play Dark Souls on there where you kill an enemy that drops an item, you go two levels ahead, and then you come back, and that item is still there waiting for you. Like, money still disappears in this. Are you serious? You cannot be serious. There's no way you can't render all these... Look at all these Heartless on the screen right now. Sure, they're low poly and everything, but they're still there. Don't disappear my money after a few seconds. I'll get around to picking it up eventually once I'm done riding this roller coaster around on Splash Mountain. Two tickets, please. All right, let's talk about the gameplay. Finally, we're back to fighting Heartless. No more fucking unversed. Actually, they're in this game. Dream Eaters aren't, though. That's great. We get to fight nobodies again. Heartless. Fartless, fartless, ham sandwiches, YouTubers, etc, etc. It's your classic blase fair, press X to win, and then sometimes triangle to win even faster. And it's as easy as, hey, look, here's the objective, run towards it. Press X. You win! Whoa, check it out, here's a new feature. Upgrading your Keyblades is a great idea. If you love it, you can keep using it. You like that Kingdom Key? Just keep upgrading it. It'll be obsolete eventually, but if you want to keep it good for as long as you can, just waste all of your materials on that. Each Keyblade has different alternate forms that give you all kinds of exciting moves that you'll never use. The game is really, really easy. I mean, like, really easy. Remember on Proud Mode, Guard Armor would just destroy you. On Proud Mode, even the Seeker boss is just a cakewalk. Sora's ultimate attack. Darkness. Heart. Darkness. Friends. To the end. I really don't give. Did you ever get the Ultima weapon in these games? Oof. It's hard. It's very hard. But in the end, it's pretty satisfying, because it's the ultimate Keyblade that Sora keeps f***ing losing! With no storyline reason behind that, he's just like, I was just reaching down for a gumball and I dropped it! Now I gotta go get it again! Ultima Weapon is as hard as my heart on a Tuesday afternoon to obtain. Expect to grind through the very worst parts this game has to offer to obtain it. The frozen slider level, the cooking minigames, and playing these flantastically awful mini-games! I hate the melon! Like, I didn't expect them to just give it to me out the gate, but why can't I just synthesize it? I don't mind grinding the ingredients for a few hours, but playing these awful mini-games just drove me insane! Bring, bring! Hey, Sora! Fuck you! It's time to talk about the gummy ship! Like the interruption was uncalled for. No, you don't say- Interrupting is annoying? No way! I can't believe that anybody would ever- Well, you know how space spreads out in all directions? Infinite directions. You can go any which way. Well, the gummy ship flying now lets you almost fly like that. You get up and down or right out. You know, the normal- two directions that you go. So you have to make like a spiral if you're trying to head straight up or down. You gotta kinda corkscrew yourself. What is this, 1947? I love how there are these cutscenes that tell you exactly where to go and then your fucking partners will be like, immediately, ah, oh, this is where we need to go, Sora, just in case you've forgotten or spaced out in the last 10 seconds. I know the writing isn't very... Hey, come on, man, I could figure out where to go. There's even a waypoint in the freaking marker on my thing telling me where to go. Just let me play the game without being bothered. Oh my gosh, are they actually going to let me? Here we go. I was just freaking, I was just, oh yeah, take that. If there only was a huge minigame based on this. Dude, you're rocking and socking in these robots. Oh, that's pretty fun and pretty satisfying. No, 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 ruin the moment, no, please. Hey, just like in Breath of the Wild, you get an iPad now. Oh, say cheese, Sora. Ah, my fucking eyes. Why would they do this? Oh, check it out, a lucky emblem. Oh, I love these things. They give me, like, items and... Ah! Oh, I forgot. Oh, gee. That's not how cameras work. You don't point them at your own eyes, turn the flash to max, and then let it rip. At least they put in an option to turn that off. Oh, Jesus Christ. They didn't do that either. Yeah, lucky emblems are little hidden mickeys that range from a simple little symbol to lining up a bunch of rocks to make the classic Disney mickey emblem.
and then you get stuff for it. It's fun. It's like a little treasure hunt. And then your companions will constantly nag you if you're in a room with a lucky emblem. I bet you there's a lucky emblem here. The music is pretty alright, but it's mostly just remixes. There's hardly anything new in this one. It might have been better if while I was playing it, I didn't get interrupted every 10 seconds by... Yes. 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 I bet you there's a lucky emblem here. Remember in previous games when your partners didn't blab your ear off? <laughs> well, at least they made a setting to turn that off. Right? Oh. Oh no, oh no, there isn't one. There, oh, oh, there isn't one. Oh dear. Oh, oh. Okay, there's one music track that shines out above all the others, and that is, of course, the intro. The intro in one was good, the intro in two was good, and this one is good as well. Listen to that! Alright, let's talk about the plot, the juicy thing that keeps these horrible stories moving forward. The power of waking is an ambiguous thing brought up in Dream Drop Distance, one of the games you didn't play. And apparently it's this ultimate power that Sora needs to achieve to be able to survive within the realm of darkness and save his friends and all that jazz. So how do you get it? By f***ing around in Disney Worlds! Like literally, you get to go to Disney World and look at how much fun they're having on these Disney brand integrated rides! Whee! Uh, two tickets please. Seriously, whenever he gets to a new world, Donald's like, uh, so what are we doing here? He's like, I don't fucking know, let's go have fun! Doop doop doop! And that's fine, it's, a, it's supposed to be lighthearted and whimsical. But the reason for why they're there it can't just be explained by, oh, why are we here? I don't fucking know, let's go. When they have this overarching, desperate struggle against the darkness, like, our friends are literally dying in the darkness. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ride this roller coaster for a while. <laughs> like, seriously, it's hammered into you how important the power of waking is. Every single world, they're like, did you get it? No, did you get it? No, you need to get it, Sora. And then there's a part where he's like, I need to go to the realm of darkness. You can't. You don't have the power of waking yet. And then literally two worlds later, he's like, I'm going to go to the darkness world. You don't have the power of waking. Fuck it. I'm going to do it anyways. And he does it just fine. What is... What the... What the... Fucking... <laughs> like, why? You can't have this thing that it's like, you need to have this to go in there. Like, you need the covenant of Artorias so you can be in the abyss or the abyss just swallows you and you fucking die. Not for Sora, he's like, you know what, I just hacked myself into the realm of darkness, I can survive just fine. Whew. Writing level. It's over 9,000! Like, man, you can't keep driving your story forward by, with this ambiguous thing that is, is required and then just be like, fuck it. He goes there and he didn't need it in the beginning or at all, ever. <laughs> That's just bad storytelling. That's like in Lord of the Rings if fucking Frodo forgot their ring at home and they're like, well, we're already at the volcano. We might as well toss something in there and they just toss in a fucking Tootsie Roll pop and then they're like, well, let's go home. And then Sauron's defeated for no reason. And it's like, what? 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 What, did the f what was the point of the ring? It doesn't make any sense. How does King Crimson's power work? Woo. Okay. Uh, okay. I, you get it. You get it, right? You can get why this is a bad thing. How does King Crimson work? Okay, so now that I've calmed down and we've established that the power of waking is not the main driving force, what keeps Sora going to the Disney worlds? Well, in Kingdom Hearts 1, it was to lock the keyholes and prevent the Heartless from devouring the world and stealing its darkness or something. I can't remember. Maybe when they steal the heart of the world, then all the hearts that were in that world get transferred into Kingdom Hearts, which is a door. And then it's the moon? And then it's a feeling? I don't know. Kingdom Hearts is weird, man. You need to read, like, every all the Wikipedia articles to understand what anything is in this game. I just want to hit Keyblades and get the ultimate Keyblade and... Kingdom Hearts 2, it was to connect with your friends and open gateways that were also keyholes, but you were locking them, you were unlocking them, so that way you could reach other places and fuck around in more Disney worlds. That... 
I don't remember. That's weird. I can't remember. I played all of them. Every single one. Even the poopy ones. Did I experience it all? Yeah! Did I understand the plot? Oh, hell no! <laughs> learning the plot to Kingdom Hearts is like learning the plot to a porn. It's like, yeah, cool, great. Now, can I see the things I want to see and enjoy myself, please? Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, oh, <laughs> But in Kingdom Hearts 3, there is no cloud, so 0 out of 10. There's no Sephiroth either, so negative 0 out of 10. The Kingdom Hearts timeline is such a garbled mess, man. Before 3 came out, there were like a million YouTube videos all trying to explain the timeline. Like, look at all these! Jesus Christ! You know you've got a complicated timeline when you need to watch YouTube videos to bring yourself up to speed for the timeline. Like, not even the little pre-thing brings you all the way up to speed. You're gonna see characters that you have no idea what they're talking about, events that took place that you're like, okay, that's weird, are they gonna explain that? No, and the answer is no. They're not. Even Axel in one of the things is like, uh, should we, like, explain to each other, like, who we are? And they're like, nah, if you played the games, you know. And he's like, but I didn't, I didn't do that. I only played one and two, the main ones. I didn't even play 358 over 2 divided by 7 times 12 to the 6th power. The game that I'm in. And then Disney's like, ah, too bad, lol. My name backwards is Yen Sid. Okay, to put this in perspective, Skyrim is number 5 in the series. Do I need to know a bunch of fucking expository everything? No, I just pop it in and I'm playing it. I'm playing a game. I don't need any of that. So at the point in the timeline where Kingdom Hearts takes place, Sora is basically like a condominium for hearts, which in this context means like souls, but not really. It's like a cross between your thoughts, memories, soul, and life force all in one, I guess. Basically the writers didn't give a shit, and we shouldn't either. So Sora's got a heart within his heart, and then another heart in his heart, and then another heart in his heart, I guess. He's like a Russian nesting doll. Just that one inside that one, that one inside that one, that one inside that one. You might not notice on your first playthrough through this, but there are some amazing plot holes that there is no way you could miss on your second playthrough. The whole driving force for Flynn going with Rapunzel is because she has his magic bag. Okay, so in this scene at the end, Rapunzel's got the bag, but guess where it is in this scene back here previously? In Mother Gothel's fucking hands, she's got the bag! What in the hell is happening in this game? They didn't even, like, error check it. They didn't spell check it either. I didn't know that Flynn Rider suddenly turned into Eugene. That's a lot of spelling errors there. That's a lot of damage. Okay, so let's all agree to disagree to agree here. The Frozen World was the absolute worst. In a game of soulless world, this one takes the frozen cake. They emphasized it so much in the trailers, but you don't get the leading lady as an ally, like with Aladdin, Jack, Sully, etc. They were planning on making Elsa a boss, but Disney forbid the Kingdom Hearts makers from messing with their brand, their precious brand. So they barely were able to do anything with the world. They were going to make her Ice Palace, the dungeon, but then they were like, Oh no, it can't be an evil place, just gotta let it go. Let it go, make your own dungeon out of snow, and that's what they did. Like, did, did they really just put in the songs to emphasize, like, Oh look, we got Frozen shit, we got all the assets, look, it's all here. It just seems really shallow, man. The plot sucks too. Get up the mountain to Elsa's. Oopsie, fall down. Up again. Oh, oopsie, fall down. Gotta find Olaf. That looks like Olaf. Oh my god, I can't find this thing. That looks like Olaf. Shut up. I hear Olaf. Shut up. This looks like a good place to find some Olaf. Fuck. And last boss, again, it's, it's this guy? Who the hell, who the fuck is that? I haven't seen him in this whole world. Who the hell is that? He's in the movie, so they made him a villain, but it's not explained in the game, like, at all? He's just a guy that's there to be evil? What the fuck is this, Breath of the Wild? It could have been so much better had Disney not been slapping the creator's wrists every time they wanted to take a cookie from the idea cookie jar. No ideas for you! Now sell our products! Here, look, it's a roller coaster, Disney brand. Would you like two tickets, please? No. No, I would not. Fuck you, Disney. Whoa! 
Oh, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Look at this huge cast. Oh, I can't wait to explore this. Oh, this underwater section? Oh, man, I, I can't wait to explore this. This looks so good. Spoilers! You can't. What a fucking tease. They made this whole beautiful world, filled it with all these graphics and polygons, and you can't even do anything in it. What is this? Breath of the Wild? What do we got as far as Kingdom Hearts 4? Well, the ending is the end of the Xehanort arc, so they try to sneak in a bunch of nonsense to set up a sequel about a box that isn't really addressed by Sora and company. It, Maleficent's looking for it in the background, kind of, and then at the end there's like a secret scene that's like, oh, this phone game was actually important. So important that it's the setup for Kingdom Hearts 4. Hope you played that one, or at least read the cliff notes. What the fuck? Come on, man. Where's my desperate struggle that I'm like, oh, I have to see what happens next. Where's my goddamn Final Fantasy characters? This game is like 98.6 repeating percentage fan service. Like, I can't get into the spoilers, but so many great characters make a return in this game, and they are all there for you, except for Cloud. Man, they were just like only trying to piss me off, weren't they? You guys knew why I bought the game. You guys knew I couldn't wait for the 7 remake. You knew I wanted him in this game so I could fucking fulfill my cravings with my <laughs> It feels like this whole game had to be approved by some Disney marketing people. Hmm. What if we used a uh, Spikey's attacks there to promote the fun and magic of Disneyland Rides Incorporated. Uh, two tickets, please. Is it worth getting? I mean, when it's discounted, yeah, sure. It's not worth the full price of admission. And was it worth the wait? Well, I expected a lot of stuff out of it. I wanted Cloud, damn it! I wanted more Kingdom Hearts 2 less Dream Drop Distance. Unfortunately, I got more of the latter and less of the former. I know, I can always just go back and play 2 again and re-experience the magic, but... Damn it, there's no magic quite like the thrills of Disneyland Park Rides! Ah, crap, it's getting into my head. We're still playing, 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 playing.